with elections? I think it was much more successful than what many people expected. You know, there were some issues about violence before the time, political killings, about issues of uh, whether the IEC will be able to perform well and that they will restore their credibility. Mm -hmm. I think mo most of those matters were addressed in a very successful way, mm -hmm. as well as the outcome. The outcome became highly interesting, you know, mm -hmm. much more than I think that was expected. Mm -hmm. um, and South Africans in general, I think, are reinvigorated by the outcome of the successful election. Yes. Now talk to us about the outcome. Why were the metro so hotly contested uh, this time as compared to the previous uh, government elections, local government elections? Well, I, I think we saw, saw already in 2014 that there's something in the pipeline. Uh, because there, the, for example, in Swane, the ANC's majority was 50.96, so less than 1% of a majority. Um, in, in Johannesburg, it was about 53%. Uh, in, in Nelson Mandela, it was, by, by it was already below 50%. So it was, in a sense, a precursor for what we saw over this weekend. But I think what, what was really surprising is, is the outcome, um, the real results in the end. Um, mm -hmm. The fact that the ANC lost in total about 8% uh, compared to 2011, uh, which is more than I think what most people expected. And then some other interesting points, for example, that the EFF is, as you say, the kingmaker, but in terms of the overall percentage, it didn't make such a dramatic increase. Mm -hmm. But if you look in terms of increase, in terms of the vote tally that they received from the last elections, two million people voted for the EFF this time around. Yeah, but that's, that's problematic, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't compare apples with apples. Yes. You know, because there are many more voters that registered for this election, uh, and therefore it's impossible to, to look at the real votes. You know? mm -hmm. uh, we should, the, the, the best possible way of comparison is by looking at the percentage Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, uh, you start to distort the situation. What do you make of the overall performance of the African National Congress during this local government elections? Well, I think they conceded that it was possibly their worst election since 1994. They've mm -hmm. lost uh, not only in Gauteng 10% like what they did in 2014, but overall it was now a dramatic decline in their support. The first time below 60%, which is sort of a symbolic threshold for the ANC mm -hmm. um, in general. And I think at, at the same time, um, also in, in some cases, like for example, uh, uh, Nelson Mandela Bay, where they, they, there was an outright loss. It was not as marginal as, for example, in uh, Tswane or Johannesburg, but mm -hmm. there it was an outright loss. And I think in that sense, that's, that's something that the ANC will have to go back and especially with the up upcoming national conference in 2017 mm -hmm. and the 2019 election. Uh, that is something that they will have s seriously to reconsider their position. Mm -hmm. The Democratic Alliance is a party that did very well. They actually surprised themselves a couple of times, you think? Again, no, yes, they did, but in very specific parts of the country, mm -hmm. in the metros and then in the Western Cape and then, for example, Midval. But again, the overall majority or the increase is less than 3%, mm -hmm. you know, which is less than between 2006 and 2011. So overall, yes, they, they made s serious inroads into some, some of the strongholds of the ANC and specifically the, the metros. In the Western Cape, they consolidated their position substantially also. Mm -hmm. um, but still, for example, I looked at townships like Atridgeville, where there was a lot of problems in the, in the uprun to the election. There, they didn't yet make that, that, that sort of inroads into the support base of the ANC. So mm -hmm. there's still a lot of work for the DA in order to really become a, a national party, yes. as if you, one can call it that. Professor, why do you think these local government elections were so contested? Was it because of p a service delivery or was it perhaps some parties looking at access to the public purse? Well, I think there were many issues involved, you know, starting with the local issues about service delivery, about good governance in general or good government, I would rather want to, to call it. But then it was also about the internal ANC matters. For example, if you look at KwaZulu-Natal, the, the issues between the Communist Party and the ANC became very pronounced. The issues about the nomination process, the candidates. Um, and in some cases, President Zuma played a role you know, as, mm -hmm. as a person. So one cannot isolate it to one factor that had, was the, over, or the overarching factor for this election. Mm -hmm. But it was rather a combination, and I, I think the, the combination of negative fact factors really contributed to, to the ANC's performance now.
Johannesburg and Swane was very interesting. It seems like uh, there needs to be some horse trading, very, very big horse trading between those two, and especially also in Nelson Mandela Bay. But talk to us about that. The kingmaker, the EFF now right in the middle. Yes. Who is likely to speak to who in terms of making it work in Swane as well as in Johannesburg? Well, they've made it clear that it should not be done at local level. It should be in some, the ANC says it must be done at provincial level. The DA prefers, prefers that it happens at national level. And someone like James Self appears to be the kingmaker on the side of the, of the DA. He's, he's the main negotiator. On the side of the EFF, it's not exactly clear. It seems like the Secretary General is a, a key person in it. But I think ultimately it will end up with the two main leaders, mm -hmm. uh, Musi mm -hmm. Maimani and, and Julius Malema. Um, and uh, we've heard also the, way the role that Dali Mpofu is playing, especially in, in Nelson Mandela Bay. Mm -hmm. But the EFF does not appear to be really directly involved now anymore in the Nelson Mandela Bay. It's, it's now more the UDM and, and two or three smaller parties. Now, municipal managers will be calling various council meetings in two weeks' time. What happens then if the parties did not get to a point where they can reach a coalition at that point in time? Well, according to the constitution and the legislation, then the national and provincial governments can intervene. Mm -hmm. And they will then try to, to mediate um, an, an agreement uh, or uh, some form of, of an agreement. If that fails, you know, there is always the possibility. Very, It's, it's not... Um, a useful option, but it is an option, is that of a minority government. Is mm -hmm. when, when the party with the most votes can form a government, but it w will have problems, for example, with the adoption of, of a budget, uh, where they still need the 50% plus one, so it will become an ongoing negotiation process mm -hmm. in order to have a majority each time a, a serious decision or vote is taken in the municipal um, Councils. Mm -hmm. So it must be a majority in order to take the process forward and in order to deliver services to uh, the, the communities. Yes, that's for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, uh, the, it's, it's, un, it's almost unworkable to have a, not a majority. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not impossible, but it's, it's unlikely and it's, un, and it's not yes. pre preferable. Mm -hmm. So the idea of a, of a coalition, and in the case of Twani and Johannesburg, there is only really only one option, given mm -hmm. the commitments that have been made like the EFF was saying they don't want to work with the ANC, because of the small nature or the, small, uh, of the smallness of all the other parties. It is actually the, only the DA and the EFF is less. So it's, it's almost a, 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 an arranged marriage, if one can put it in those terms, with no other options. One of our viewers raised the question of proportional representation. How does it work in this particular case, Professor? It's a very complicated system that's being used because it's a combination of proportional representation and directly elected councillors in the wards. But once the, the wards have been allocated uh, or have been finalised, then they add all the votes, the proportional representation plus the wards uh, votes together. They work out a, a quota of what is the minimum necessary for one seat on a proportional basis. Then they calculated that. In the, in the process, they first subtract the independent uh, seats and then they work out the allocation and then they subtract the wards from the proportional representation. So it's a bit complicated, mm. Mm. but in the end, the, the outcome is always should be proportional in nature. What we've seen in the reporting so far is very often only the ward seats that have been became known. And mm -hmm. it distorted, in a sense, the picture a little bit and it was only sort of balanced or rectified once the proportional representation seats were also mm -hmm. calculated. As you say, it is a very difficult concept to understand, and we're probably going to work through that to, to get some more information there. Professor Dirk Kotz is sitting with us in studio. We're going to uh, continue this discussion after this break, but we first have to look at your comments, what you have to say to us today. Now, tomorrow, South Africa celebrates Women's Day, a day that's set aside to pay homage to the women who fought tirelessly against the tyranny of the apartheid government. Now let's take a look at